Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video I would like to do a full test of the Cease Prestige FA22RCZ 8 inch full range driver. So there's a uh, number of interesting features about this driver. Uh, one is that it's, it's relatively affordable, made in Norway, has a reasonable QTS for traditional reflex alignment in the base. Uh, deep drawn copper cap on the pull piece for reduced intermodulation distortion. And another thing I wanted to point out was the very open back on the basket of the driver. And you can see here that the motor former and voice coil is clearly exposed and they've gone to great lengths to reduce uh, reflections off the back of the driver, including a very open weave on the spider. And there's a uh, kind of a silicon dampener ring that's uh, placed just around the outside perimeter of where the spider mounts to the basket. So very interesting design that's very promising. Uh, looks like they've gone to considerable effort, at least in this one aspect of the design. And so what I'd like to do is look at the uh, full set of test measurements and see how it performs on a subjective level as well. So you can see here in my test setup, I'm, I'm using the Cease drivers in my 50 liter Onking cabinet and they perform quite well in these cabinets. Looking at the frequency response, you can see that the, um, you know, I did a ground plane measurement uh, up to 400 hertz where I spliced it with a gated response at around a one meter mic distance. So you can see a uh, strong rising response with a peak at three kilohertz. We have extension out to 16 kilohertz and there is um, a high Q peak at around 14 kilohertz. So with this design, I tried to implement my own baffle step correction circuit and uh, a word of caution when doing this on this driver uh, I have two lines here the red line represents ultimately where I ended up with my baffle step compensation uh, the gray represented where I felt uh, there was too much baffle step applied and it really did have a detrimental effect on the overall liveliness of the sound and so just a word of caution um, on that I decided as well to implement an LCR notch filter on the three kilohertz peak and you can see the before and after effect of that notch filter ultimately this is what i settled on for a baffle step circuit and notch filter i would strongly encourage you to experiment with the 4.7 ohm resistor to basically adjust the the uh, overall balance and the treble to your uh, music and listening space Looking at the burst decay, we can see that for an 8 inch full range driver, uh, keeping that in context, it performs good. You can see that there are some, there is some stored energy at 3 kilohertz and also at the uh, resonant peak um, or the frequency response peak that we're seeing at uh, 14 kilohertz. We can see that it's showing up in the burst decay as well as some energy. Uh, the impedance sweep, we can see that there's some uh, undulations at 500 and 800 hertz and then at 2 kilohertz and at 3 kilohertz which I can show you in the distortion plots that these in fact show up as some anomalies. With the harmonic distortion um, we're seeing a, a steady rise in second order harmonic as we approach 90 dB uh, at 1 meter we're seeing that distortion remains at around 0.5%. Intermodulation distortion is a relatively uh, new type of test that I've been doing, which has its own uh, virtues in the sense that the dual test signal that I use uh, more closely uh, mimics uh, musical content, which reveals even more uh, sideband uh, artifacts. So we can see here what this tells us is that the driver performs uh, quite well at lower listening levels, yeah, particularly in the upper treble. We're seeing also that as you increase the output SPL that the anomalies that we saw on the impedance start to show up as distortion products and at around 600 hertz. Um, distortion remains low even at 95 dB uh, in the upper treble. So this is something that I'm going to discuss in a future video as well. Um, so stay tuned for that. Off axis polar, what we're seeing is that the uh, directivity starts to narrow at around 2 kilohertz and it's producing around a 40 degree listening window uh, even into the upper treble. So I think this, uh, when you look at the 
bipolar response in the upper treble combined with the, the low distortion. I think this is identifying where some of the charm comes from with this type of driver and that the sound is sound is very directional and very uh, if you're using uh, distortion as a metric for clarity we're getting a very clear sound quality that's very directional so we're not getting uh, very much room interaction uh, so this can be quite a revelation uh, and, what, and what I think is what is uh, why there's an appeal uh, to this type of driver and its overall clarity in the upper treble. So subjective listening, uh, this driver is significantly better than the Fostex FE 206 EN in terms of overall clarity and smoothness. The treble I would say is on par with a really good dome tweeter or even a pure ribbon tweeter which is quite surprising. Um, I would say it's, it's very similar to the smaller Mark Audio drivers um, like the Alpair 7.3. Uh, in an 8 inch format. So uh, there you go. Very, very encouraging results. So I would strongly recommend this driver for those that are wanting uh, to enter into the single full range driver genre and uh, also considering that it's affordable as well uh, I would recommend it for those that are wanting to get into the uh, hi-fi hobby. So there you have it. Those are my uh, my results and take care and have a great day.